adding mods to a Minecraft server. That's what we're going to be doing in this video today. However, we do assume that you already have a Forge server set up. Forge is required as well as a Forge server is required in order to install mods on the server and then play that server with mods. Yourself and everyone who plays on your modded Minecraft server must have every single mod that your server has installed locally as well. So, for example, if you install just enough items, Xero's minimap, and Spark, in our case, all three of those are going to be installed today on your server, you will also need to install those locally. So will everyone who plays on your Minecraft server. So for that reason, we have this tutorial linked in the description, which is our in-depth guide on how to download and install Forge. It goes over everything you need to know to download Forge, get it set up. We are going to be installing the mods locally in this video. But as far as getting Forge locally, that's what this tutorial is for. We also have an in-depth guide in the description down below on how to get your Minecraft server started and get mods on it. You need a Forge Minecraft server in order to add mods to a Minecraft server. So you need a Forge server to add mods to it, and that link is in the description as well. Nevertheless, though, let's go ahead and download our mods. As I said, there's three mods you're going to be using. First is just enough items. All these are found in the description, and any updated mod to 1.19.2 should work on a Minecraft server. Nevertheless, to download a mod from our website, once you're here, click on the download button. That makes it the official just enough items download page. Most, if not all, Minecraft mods you'll download will be from Curse Forge here. So let's come over to the right-hand side, scroll down to the 1.19 section. As you can see, there's just enough items 1.19.2 Forge. You don't want to make Make sure you download the Forge version of a mod. Some will have Forge and Fabric versions. Fabrics is just another mod loader. It's great, but in this specific video, we're teaching you about Forge. So nonetheless, in the bottom left here, where we will see just enough items downloaded, you may need to keep this in the bottom left or save it on the server screen on Firefox. Let's repeat this same process for Xero's minimap. Click the download button and come to the right-hand side and scroll down. Now, as I said, we need to make sure that we are downloading the Forge version. In case of Xero's minimap, there is a Forge version and a Fabric version, so we want to make sure we're downloading the Forge one for this server. So there we go. Boom. Downloading. And after a few seconds, it will download just like just enough items did in the bottom left. Boom. Again, you may need to keep or save it. Last. Spark. Spark is a mod that is honestly really cool. So scroll down, click the download button, it takes you here. This mod though is really good for Minecraft servers because it gives you more insight on your Minecraft server, on the lag in your server, and specifically where lag is coming from in regards to your CPU usage. These days, RAM isn't as important as CPU when it comes to hosting a Minecraft server, and that's where Spark comes in to help document and see where that lag is coming from and why your CPU might be bottlenecking. But nevertheless, on the right hand side, again, scroll down, we want to download the Forge 1.19.2 version. Version. Click the download button there, and after a few seconds, the download will begin. You may need to keep or save the file depending on your browser. Nevertheless, we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and here's our Forge 1.19.2 server. It's set up, as you can see, it's ready to go. If yours isn't, go through that guide in the description on how to get your Forge server. Next, let's go ahead and move our mods to our desktop. To do that, click the little notice icon to the top of my screen, probably in the bottom of your screen or bottom of your screen on Windows 11. And yes, this is fully working on Windows 11. Type in downloads, you have this downloads file folder here, and in here are all of the mods. Drag and drop them to your your desktop. These will need to be installed in two places. The first is the Minecraft server itself. So let's go ahead and open that up. Let's go ahead and open the mods folder in the Minecraft server. And then let's just drag and drop our mods into this folder here. So now when we go into our server, boom, there they are. We'll also need to install these mods locally. So I'm going to keep this up and we're going to go ahead and do that. To do it, click the little windows icon on the top left of my screen, bottom of your screen, bottom center on Windows 11. Type in run. We have this run app here. Open this up, and then in here we want to type percent sign, app data percent sign percent, app data percent, and hit enter. It's going to open this roaming right here, and then in here you'll have the .minecraft folder. Open that, and then we want to go ahead and click on mods. If for whatever reason you don't have a mods folder in here, just go ahead and create one. So right click, new folder, and title it mods, M-O-D-S, all lowercase, exactly like that. Open that up, and now we don't want to drag and drop these from our server. We want to highlight them all, right click, copy, and then come over here to our local mods folder. As you can see, it's roaming.minecraft and paste. So right click and paste and boom. Now these are installed locally in Forge and on our Minecraft Forge server as well. All the mods must be in both places for this to work. And yes, every single one of your friends will need to install every single mod you have in your server. So it can be good to make a mod pack of them or something like that. Just make sure the creator of the mod allows mod packs. Nevertheless, at this point, all we need to do is run our server by double clicking on the run.bat file. And we need to open up Minecraft. But again, we want to make sure we're playing with that Forge installation that we have. So for me, I already have one here. Wait for it. There we go, and there is Forge. As you can see, 
already selected, good to go. You might need to select it from the installations tab. Make sure mod is checked, one of those things. But let's go ahead, click play. Might need to confirm you're playing mod in Minecraft. If so, click play again. And now Minecraft's gonna open up with Forge and our mods installed. Our server is already opened with our mods installed. And depending on the mod, you can actually scroll back through here and find where it's loaded. As you can see, loading Xero's minimap right there, that is. All the mods should be loaded in that somewhere, but it can be a bit to search through them all. Before we join the server, let's go ahead and make sure they are installed locally in Minecraft. Click on mods here and you can see we've got Spark, Xero's minimap, and just enough items all installed and loaded, which is good to see. We can then go ahead and join our server. If you get this, go ahead and click proceed. And we're going to direct connect to local host here because that's where this server is. Obviously, your friends would join via your public IP, something like that. Nevertheless, once we're loaded in, we can see automatically in the top left, Xero's minimap is there. It is now loaded in. And we can do things like run slash TPS, which is one of Spark's biggest features, except it seems to have not worked. I think Spark TPS is what we need. There we go. So slash Spark TPS, you can see right there it is. 20 TPS is what you're looking for on a Minecraft server. That means there's no lag. CPU usage, as you can see, the Minecraft server is using 15% of my CPU. Kind of impressive. How do you run like a Spark report? Well, we can do slash Spark, and then we can do profiler dash dash start. And that's now profiling our CPU and our Minecraft server and what's happening on our Minecraft server. Now, for me, there's no lag. If you are getting less than 20 TPS here, specifically less than, I would say, 18 TPS consistently, that is when your server is definitely probably having some lag there, and it's worth looking at Spark more in depth. The other mod that we added here is just enough items. And if we go ahead and hit E, we can see there it is. This is just enough items on the left hand or right hand side here. And all of those mods are installed and working, which is good to see. You can add any mods that you want, including tech mods like AE2 or things like Twilight Forest, which is a very more in-depth mod that adds an entirely new world. Those will work on your Minecraft server and can be installed as well in the exact same method. Just make sure that they're on your server and installed locally on your computer and anyone who joins the server's computer as well. If someone gets an error that is a mismatched mod list, that is due to them not having the mods on your server installed locally. It's also could be due, if they have all the mods, that the versions have changed. So sometimes you need the exact same version of a mod installed locally and on the server in order for it to work. So nevertheless, those are some of the more nuances that you can, you know, kind of deal with occasionally with modded Minecraft servers. It's one of the more difficult servers to host. And for that reason, we recommend using plugins any chance you can get and avoiding mods. But nevertheless, that is how you can add mods to a Minecraft server. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. But let's check that Spark profile. So if we do slash Spark dash dash or sorry, Spark Profiler, dash dash stop, boom, we will get a link. And this link right here is going to have a complete look at our Minecraft server and everything on it. So if we go to this link, we can see, boom, 20 TPS, as well as, you know, CPU usage during that time, memory usage, all of that. However, if we go ahead and jump into server thread, we can see where all the different performance and all the different things in our Minecraft server are being used, right? Since there's no lag, there's no really thing to look into quite yet on this, but if there is lag, you'll be able to very much so see it. Blockable event loop is basically just saying a server's waiting, I believe. Yeah, wait until next tick. There's nothing it's doing, and that's kind of why that's, you know, the most important thing. But if you had something like entities or something like that being the most important or biggest red thing here, well, that's what's going to be causing lag, so you need to reduce entities on your server. Anyway, I'm Nick. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your new modded Minecraft server with your new mods on it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.